I'm here today to talk to you about getting in shape and what's right and wrong and what you need to look for. First of all, people go to the gym first. That has nothing to do with anything. You should think about shaving. If you're a woman and you shave your legs or you're a man and you shave your face, you want to have eaten the materials and the foods that would have caused you to clot the blood should you cut yourself. It's the same with fitness. You don't go to the gym first. You start adding things properly to your diet, but more importantly, you take the bad things out and you stop the negatives first. After that, you go to the gym, you say, well, I need to do a warm up. No, if you're doing multiple sets of exercises or you're doing just a set of exercise, which is proper, your warm up reps or your first three or four repetitions are your warm up. They're done submaximally. So you don't need a lot of warm up. And then you need to think about the stretch. Are your reps full range of movement? Literally, if you have resistance in your hands or you're using a machine like I'm sitting on, you can go through a full range of movement with that resistance on you. But you need to set your machine up and adjust it so that you can get a full range of movement. So your stretching is done while you're working the muscle and you get a much better benefit. Then there's the point of reps. High reps or low reps? Sorry folks, it doesn't matter. Somewhere between 8 and 14 reps you should hit a point of what's called stimulus. You should be working hard enough so that when you're pushing yourself, you're literally causing the muscle to temporarily fail and you're unable to move anymore with maximum effort. That's your rep range. You either go to a point of stimulus for a response or you don't. Next thing is multiple sets. If you need to keep doing multiple sets of an exercise, that's ego. Okay, that's fear. This is craziness. I mean, you either push a muscle to a point of stimulus or you don't. Multiple sets, if they work, then marathon runners would be bodybuilders. It would look totally different. It doesn't work like that. Multiple sets are for the insecure and the people who don't know science. Okay, then there are split routines. I love this one. I work my upper body one day, my lower body another. I work my shoulders one day, I work my legs another. So do you just feed your legs one day and you just sleep your upper body another day? I believe we only have one internal system that works for the whole body and we need to work with that. We need to stimulate the body as a whole, we need to feed it as a whole, we need to sleep it as a whole, and we need to treat it as a whole unit. That's what is important. The next thing is people take a lot of time between exercises. Why? So that the assisting muscle groups recover more and that you lose the benefit of increased cardiovascular benefit and conditioning, actual metabolic change by keeping the body working at a higher rate and causing muscles to get worked in less time? No, that doesn't work. Another thing is people will do cardio first. Now how ridiculous is this? I mean, you want fresh oxygen in your muscles after you've worked out. You want the cardiovascular benefit and, and exercise any additional being done after your resistance training to move out the lactic acid, to move out the oxidized materials and to re-oxygenate the body and to get it ready to heal. This is what's really supposed to be done. The next thing is people talk about free weights and machines. Oh, they think free weights are everything. Well, folks, you gotta be smarter than the dumbbell, okay? You gotta be smarter than the barbell. This is why a machine was invented. This machines are used for many things. With a barbell, if you're doing a bench press or a squat and you continue to push to a point where you're reaching muscular failure, yes, you might use a little bit of muscles for balance, but on the machine, it's guided. And with that guided machine, you can push yourself farther into exhaustion, recruiting the smaller muscle groups to a much greater degree, thereby getting a better overall benefit and getting a deeper cardiovascular and metabolic conditioning for your, for your conditioning overall. So machines are always superior to free weights. And I've been an experienced bodybuilder and a title holder, and I can tell you that it works. The next thing you might want to think about is that, um, you know, you can either work out hard or you can work out long. If you're going to the gym and you're going to spend a lot of time in the gym, you're not working out. You either work out hard or long, but you can't work out real long, real hard. If you think you can, try using a 50-yard sprint pace for an hour. You can't do it. So work those muscles, push them to a point where they're stimulated, and then leave the gym. When you get more advanced, then you'll do workouts where you don't push the body just to hold the muscles from going backwards. And at that point, you'll allow the internal reserve to build up. But this needs to be measured also. The next thing is, have you watched the people yelling and screaming? Oh, please. Like that's going to do a lot for them more than giving them hemorrhoids. 
Okay, no, they're, they're kind of acting like androids, okay? It really doesn't work. Uh, yelling and screaming, you should be putting that power inside. You should be focusing yourself and try to conserve everything you can and put every effort you can into every exercise that you're doing. The next thing is, is spot reduction. People will work in an area thinking you're going to reduce the fat in that area. Sorry folks, the muscle works one way, the fat is there another. You put fat on your body in an overall uh, accumulation and when it comes off, it comes off from the extremities toward the torso and it comes off the torso last because the torso needs to be kept warm. That's survival, okay? So spot reduction is impossible, ladies and gentlemen. It just doesn't work, it's just physiologically incorrect. The next ridiculous thing is to use cardiovascular work to burn fat. Somehow you're going to have to use muscles to get your heart rate up and keep it up. Those muscles are going to become overworked, okay? They're going to become overcooked, basically. You're not going to get them to recover. And you're only going to be burning fat for the time that you're doing the exercise. Whereas if you took the time off, stimulated the body properly, and allowed the muscle to gain by getting more rest, instead of more exercise, allowing the body to heal more. Each pound of muscle you gain is going to burn more calories per day for you than actual cardiovascular exercise. Once you've gained about six to ten pounds of muscle, your metabolism is going to increase greatly. You just need to regulate the food. So burning fat is something you want to do in the correct way by gaining muscle and recovering. This is also much easier on your schedule. It gives the average person a chance to get in shape and not waste as much time in the gym. Now the last thing is, is measuring. We engineer the success of every client we have for 43 years. We actually engineer health through cancer, hepatitis C, sports, uh, youth actually having a rehabilitation from sports injuries. No matter what you're doing, it's all human performance, whether it's sickness or it's health. But the problem is, is that you've got to realize that if you're going to the gym every day and you're not measuring a positive response, you're probably doing more damage than good. You're overstimulating the body and it cannot respond. So you're doing more damage than good. So going to the gym is a good thing if you're measuring results. If you're not using the resting heart rate to see if you're recovered, if you're not using a descending heart rate to see if you're getting in better shape, if you're not using an accurate body composition, such as near-infrared light or water weighing, you're not going to know what's really happening. If you're not taking your pictures and your measurements, you're not going to know what's happening. So engineer your product, which is you, the, the finished body that you want. Set up goals, set up guidelines, set up specifics so that you can know that your engineering is working. And then you'll get what you need out of fitness. So these are the things that you need to take a look at. These are the things that will make you successful. And these are the things that you don't want to have in a program. So beware, be careful. Remember, it's your time, your efforts, and most of all, it's your health. God bless and thank you.